Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to play with Wilton's Violet. We are going to do a technique that I have done before but I have not yet done with food coloring. I want to play around with the quote dry rub technique using this food coloring to see does it break, does it not break, and explore different ways to add acid to the yarn. But I'll talk about that a little more in a moment. Today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly is sponsored by Karen. The dry rub technique is where I take wet dye and apply it to dry yarn by rubbing the yarn around on a dish pan. This gives us random color placement and is really a lot of fun. One of the cool things about doing this with Wilton's Violet is that we will potentially see minimal breaking. Normally breaking happens because the reds strike first and then the blues spread out a bit more and so then you see that halo. But if the yarn is dry, we might not see the color spread. However, normally when I do this technique, I would add the acid directly to the dye source. And the concern that I have with the Wilton's Violet is sometimes that can cause the red number threes to crash out. So we are actually gonna look at this two ways. I'm gonna do one dry rub with no vinegar and then dip dye that yarn into a kettle with vinegar. And then in the second one, I'm gonna do a dry rub where I add the vinegar to the Wilton's Violet dye in advance and then we will steam it. I expect that we're going to end up with two yarns that look really nicely together um, but they may or may not look vastly different so I can't wait to see how this will turn out. With Wilton's Violet food coloring I like to use one half of a teaspoon of dye per 100 grams of yarn. Um, this is approximate but I wanted to start out with about the same amount of dye um, on each of the skeins. Um, so I am mixing up the dye in one cup of water um, one, and I'll use one of these on each skein. Normally I will mix the dye into half a cup of water when I'm going to be dip dyeing but I decided to do a full cup because I wanted a little more water volume for when I'm adding the dye to the yarn. But as I was setting this up, I decided it would be worth to combine, well, actually that one mixed pretty well, to combine the two and then split them up again. This will give us a little more of a good comparison because you can see there is a little bit of residue left in the bottom of each of these cups. I pulled a half of cup, a half cup of the combined mixture into each of these two cups. Neither of them have any vinegar yet, but I want to start with a dry rub that has no vinegar. Um, and so I'll have the no vinegar be my pink and I'll save the green for the second skein. I have used a squirt bottle for this in the past, so I'm curious to see how this will go with just the, the yarn and the cup. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of dye to the pan and then I'm going to mop it up with the dry stroll yarn. Uh, the pan is a tad bit wet but if I don't get dye all over myself <laughs> you can see that well we're certainly getting some red number three on the basin as well. I, I guess it's possible that there was some residual vinegar there. Um, <laughs> But you can see that just from that initial dip, we have some bigger splotches, some little specker, speckles, and random coloration. As I am doing this, I like to always keep a hand on the skein. That way I can minimize the tangle that I do get as I do this. But um, I like the light and less light coverage that you can get with this technique. Add a little more and you can do like dabs, you can do bigger um, sort of dabs. The stroll sort of soaks up water fairly quickly. 
Um, some other yarns that are a little less, abs it's fairly absorbent overall. Some other ones that are less absorbent might um, take a little longer to soak up um, some of the color. But for now, it's looking fairly purple to me. I'm not really seeing, oh, over here, okay. As it gets a little wetter, I'm starting to see some more pink. I'm starting to see a little breaking around. But again, this has no vinegar in it yet. Um, it's possible there's a hint of some, oh, see, that soaked up a lot right there. It's possible that there's a hint of some acid uh, in the container, but otherwise, um, this is pretty much acid free. Well, let's see how I am doing. I'm trying, this is a, a very asymmetrical technique, um, but I do like to try for balance and to make sure that I get color across an entire section. But the final colors are ultimately very asymmetric. Um, just by nature of the fact that, you know, over here we've got more coverage on one half than the other, but hopefully by moving things around a lot, it will all even out in the end. I'm glad I decided to reduce the total volume. Um, I think that, you know, I've used a fraction of this so far start spreading it out a bit on the pan. I've only used a fraction of it so far and already my yarn is starting to feel fairly damp. Um, so I'm spreading out the yarn to sort of get a little bit of more coverage in this one section. But the wetter the yarn gets, the more sort of even or the larger patches of color we will, we will see. I'm curious about how much I've used and how much is left. Um, so since I divided it in this cup, there's probably a total of a quarter teaspoon of dye. Um, but I've, again, only used a fraction of that so far. Hmm. And then I wonder, well, I wonder how much breaking, I mean, clearly we see some breaking in the pan itself. I see some blues here, I see some pinks around the edge, um, but that isn't very much in the yarn. But I know that if I add more right now, I'm curious, okay, so as I, if I have a section, if I squeeze it on itself, you see that breaking? We got the blues over there. So the breaking that's happening right now is happening from, I guess, me sort of squeezing the yarn versus, uh, well, I guess from the dry rub application itself, but it's kind of cool that there is some breaking in there. And here we've got some more light speckling. I don't want to get full coverage, but I want to make sure that there aren't huge white sections. So I'm sort of shifting this um, to get ready pour some in and then I've got this section that's a bunch more white so I can like plop it sort of in there <laughs> just to give a little more color um, over there because right now the color penetration is ultimately relatively shallow um, but oh and I'll have to measure what's left but I think uh, I guess I haven't done the dry rub with the stroll in a while. When I do it with Hawthorne, I think that it takes a bit longer for the yarn to get wet, but I also haven't really paid attention to the volume of dye that I've been adding. Again, I don't mind there being white left behind. I like white left behind. Um, the concern is more that I don't want there to be any round like I want to make sure that there is some color on every round throughout it, but I am fairly content with this right now. And now I'm going to set this one aside and we'll start doing the dry rub on our second friend. 
I just measured and I used a little bit over a quarter cup of dye on that first um, skein. So we used, <laughs> after doing some math in my head, I think we used maybe only around an eighth of a teaspoon of dye, a little bit over than that, on that first skein of yarn. This is a half a cup of our solution. There's a quarter of a teaspoon in, of dye in here. I'm going to go ahead and add a whole tablespoon of food coloring. Some reds might crash out, but yeah, let's start dry rub number two. Our sponsor, Karen, is going to get one of the skeins that I dye in this video. And I'm planning to see which one is my favorite. Ooh, look. Okay, when I pour that in, what color did you see? That looked very blue. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, hello, what? I don't think I've added vinegar directly to the food coloring for a while. I think our reds crashed out. Um, you saw that that was the same stuff, right? Why is that looking so blue? I am confused. Um, okay, on the yarn, it's looking blurple. I do see some reds here, but this is interesting. Um, I wish that I had had that in a clear cup so I could have seen. That does not look anything like the same color. Could there have been something left in that cup? I don't think so. The cup had looked clear. I mean, it's looking like blue when I add it on, but then I guess maybe is it getting more purple as it soaks in? Is the color like pH dependent? I mean, this is a gorgeous blue. Don't get me wrong. I am just really perplexed. I've added Okay. It's not looking that sort of denim blue when it's soaking into the yarn. This is just weird. <laughs> um, and now this color here is looking more violet. Um, and the color isn't super far from what we had before. It's just looking odd <laughs> as I pour it in. That is so funny. Um, yeah, because look at how blue it looks, but then it's not going to look that blue in a minute. So, this, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if this is something that maybe I did observe in the past. I haven't added vinegar directly to the violet color in a long time. I normally pre-soak the yarn instead of the dye. Um, okay, this is hilarious. I am like, I mean, it's just changing color right before our eyes, right? This is a lot like the indigo, <laughs> but it's food coloring. What? <laughs> this is just so funny. Okay, so I just plopped it and you can see how quickly the color soaked up, but now I'm just sort of waiting waiting to see it's like slowly slowly I guess I should yeah it's getting less less blue but I don't think it's exposure to the air I think it's just exposure to the yarn uh, maybe we have a I, I, I can't even fathom or begin to fathom what is going on there um, it's cool <laughs> But let me focus on my dry rub. But as I was starting to say, today's video is sponsored by Karen. And so I will be sending her one of the skeins of yarn that I dye in this Dye Pot Weekly episode. And if you would like to learn a little more about sponsoring an episode yourself, you can uh, check out the link in the video description. When there's slots available, you can find them in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store. Uh, but, oh man, this is cool! Um, I am enjoying it. Uh, so, <laughs> a lot of time I will set color in the microwave. 
but ultimately this yarn, even though there's acid here um, and it's getting damp, is less wet than a lot of the yarns that I normally use. Man, I wish that blue would stay. That's really lovely. Normally I like to microwave yarns that I'm hand painting or doing something like this. Um, I don't microwave uh, commercial dyes, just food coloring type stuff. I'm always happy to microwave. However, um, this isn't very wet, so I'd worry about it drying out in the microwave, so therefore I will steam it on the stove top in not too long. But now I'm like going through and again trying to make sure I'm not concerned about there being complete coverage. Part of the benefits of this technique is that you can leave a lot of white behind. You don't have to. You could keep going and get full coverage and get some, you know, almost no white. But I think that um, one of the, the perks or benefits of this technique is the, the way that you can layer these tones together. But I have to say, I am very intrigued, a little perplexed, but I'm happy with the way that this one looks. I think, yeah, I used about the same amount of dye. I have just under a quarter cup of the food coloring left behind. And so now let's get ready to set these colors. I am heating up eight cups of water in my dedicated dye pot and I'm going to add one tablespoon of white vinegar. And as soon as this is done heating up, I am going to dip dye the vinegarless skein into the pot. And I expect to see some blues come out and the whites to catch some more color. and. Well, I mean, it could be different from how I expect, but that's what we're going to try to do. And once that's done, then I will steam the second skein sort of on top. The pot is heating up and let's dip our vinegarless, vinegarless yarn. You can see there are some pink patches and some blue patches already. Some of this could have come from, I think I set it in a damp container, but I'm expecting Yep, to see some blues come out as I start to add this to the pot. Yeah, you can see our patches went from purple to the magenta that we know and love <laughs> from this technique. But look at that bright, bright blue. Um, all right, I switch to, to tongs. I'm now in my Everything I'm using is no longer food safe. But that blue is a nice bright blue overall. Oh, this is fun. I'm gonna reduce the heat a bit and let's see. All right, I'm gonna let this sit in the pot for about five minutes. Um, and yeah, I'm not seeing much purple left. I think that that's because none of the blue had been able to strike the yarn. Red number three does not need very much acid at all to strike to superwash yarns, which is one of the reasons why we see such dramatic color breaking with Wilton's Violet food coloring. Um, but the blues need a lot more acid and they need heat to bind. So with no acid, this gave us this dramatic, dramatic change. Interesting. I was planning on steaming the second skein, but I think that once I remove this, I'm going to dip that into the pot too, just to see how that be a little more of a comparison. Oh, this is fun. All right, I will be back once the five minutes are up. It has been five minutes and I am expecting, yep, all of our color is in the yarn. Um, I am now, yeah, I, I love it when Sometimes I just completely revamp my plan midstream. I was going to go ahead and just steam to set that dry rub, but I actually want to dip it into the pot and see if having vinegar early on made much of a difference. Um, I know that if I were to have steamed this one or steamed that one, that well, this one had no vinegar, so I'm not sure. 
I'm pretty sure if I were to just steam the other one, it would stay white and purple sort of as we had it. But I'm curious what will happen if we dip it in to this pot. There's a hint of blue left behind in there, but I'm not going to worry about that. And I'm not going to bother changing out the, um, the water. So um, I see maybe minimal, minimal breaking on here so far. It's definitely purple. Um, I'm not sure if it's bluer than the other one. I see some hints of some pale blue in there, but let's, I'm just getting this, getting some bubbles and then I'll reduce the temp and start dipping this one. I am so intrigued. Um, <laughs> it's really fun when something starts turning out not quite the way I expect. So anyway, I am expecting to see, yep, some blues sort of come out right away, but do you see the difference? Um, blues are coming out, but I'm seeing purples left behind versus the hot pink. That is pretty darn cool. Um, the blues will take a, take a little while to strike. Um, so you can see it's sort of staying in the pot, which means um, that I'm just going to go ahead and add the rest of this. So again, the only difference was whether or not we added vinegar um, near the beginning. So I'm sort of expecting that the blue we are going to see here might end up being a little bit paler. Um, and we, it might be more purple than bright pink. But, oh, this is cool! Alright, I'm going to let this go for five minutes and then I will be back. Alright, it has been five minutes. Yep, and our water is nice and clear. Ooh, I love how pink the ties get. I have never really know what the, the yarn is. Ooh, this is beautiful. Um, all right, I'm going to set this aside and then we will compare the two. All right, we're still cooling, but here are the two skeins of yarn. When we added vinegar to the dry rub, more of the color struck right away. Some blue still needed some heat and maybe a little more vinegar to strike. Probably not more vinegar, they just needed heat to strike. So we have a nice sort of pastel blue throughout the whole skein. On the one where we had no vinegar, the blue has a lot more punch because I don't think it really struck at all until we added it to the pot with vinegar. So I'm really intrigued by this and I still have some more of our vinegary purple. So maybe I will do a third skein and then steam that one. So then we really have like a full comparison set. <laughs> There was a little less than a quarter of a cup left of our vinegary solution. So I went ahead and made it a full quarter cup, just sort of measuring out. Um, look at that. Hopefully this isn't super stained. Wow. Um, just measuring out the uh, some of the other non-vinegar dye. But now let's do a little dry rub on this last skein. And I am going to go ahead and speed this up um, since you've watched me do this once already with the vinegar one. Okay. That took about three minutes and I used up every last bit of that dye. And it's looking really purpley. So I'm gonna go ahead and steam this for 20 minutes in my steamer basket. Here is my steamer basket from the dedicated steam pot. There are some hints of pink on the yarn. Just sort of interesting to me, but otherwise, you know, there's pretty, shallow coverage overall, I would say. But anyway, I am now going to let the steam for 20 minutes and then we'll take it out and compare it 
with the other two skeins. The 20 minutes are up and so far this is looking about the same. I'm seeing some hints of the pink probably from the red number three that um, had crashed out and was on the sides. Um, ooh, there's a tiny bit of blue, but mostly purple, the little pink. I'm going to set this aside to cool off. I'm curious if this is all set, you know, sort of perfectly, or if we'll see some bleeding when we wash it. One technique, three very, very, very different looks, but I think they are all pretty awesome. Now I need to make sure that they all cool completely and then we can wash them. Let's see how badly things are stained. Um, I'm going to just start soaking all of this in some warm water with this soap. Um, the pinks sometimes will rub off of stuff, but I haven't tried dry rubbing with this, so I'm curious if my measuring cup will ever be the same again. Um, but I'll let you know. The dry rub pan is now completely clean and the measuring cup is getting cleaner. I expect it'll come off in the end. Let's start by washing the yarn that we just removed. This is the one where I would say we are probably the most likely to see some bleeding. And that color is set. There might be the tiniest hint of blue, but yeah, the, that color is in there. And yeah, I'm, I'm actually really excited. I'm not gonna add a little bit of dish soap, because um, sometimes I can help rinse out extra color. But this is already, just almost ready to go and hang up to dry already. But I'll be back in a minute, moment to rinse the other two skeins. Here are the other two skeins. And this time, since these were set, immersion set, yeah, that color is set nicely. I'm still gonna go ahead and add um, a little bit of dish soap. Because sometimes that can really help remove as well as extra dye. I'd rather have extra dye come out in the wash instead of having it come out, you know, on your needles or in your project. But, well, and I try to keep a good hold on the yarn so I don't tangle it. Phew. All right, but I'm going to keep rinsing this until the water runs clear. And then I'll come and show you what the finished dry yarn looks like. Wow. This was so much fun! And thank you, Karen, for sponsoring this video. Because using one base technique, we created three really beautiful skeins of yarn. In all of the cases, we started with dry stroll fingering weight yarn and applied wet Wilton's Violet food coloring to it in a very random manner with my favorite dry rub technique. And I think after the first step, we ended up with something that looked very much like this in each of the cases. However, the first time we had no vinegar in the dye. So to set the color, we dipped our skein into um, just a plain bath of water and vinegar, and we got this beautiful breaking from magenta and this vibrant blue. When we added some vinegar directly to the dye for the second two cases, um, and then we dipped it, we got breaking still, but it's a little less dramatic. A little more blue stayed in the splotches and speckles, and we have something with slightly less contrast than in the first one. And then finally, instead of dipping at all, I steamed the last one. And there we preserved, I guess, the true, quote, Wilton's Violet color, um, and have white left behind, and even a little bit of pink which is really intriguing to me. Um, but I love the way each of these turned out and I think that they're all absolutely beautiful. If I were gonna do this again for myself, I think I would go for this middle skein. I like the effect of having 
the dry down the dry rub and then dipping it in and getting the pastel blue throughout honestly it almost looks like we dyed the blue first and then applied the purple on top of it but you and i know the way that this really happened and that the yarn looked like this uh, before our dip into the dye bath today's episode of dye pot weekly was brought to you by karen our sponsor thank you so much for sponsoring this episode if you would like to learn more about sponsoring an episode of dye pot weekly uh, check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store. I'll have a link to the sponsorship lifting in the video description and the iCard. I really love filming these dyeing videos, but I especially love taking a technique that I enjoy and tweaking the variable slightly, especially when that gives us dramatically different results. Um, technically, all of these skeins have the exact same ingredients. I used the same amount of Wilton's Violet food coloring. I used the dry rub technique. It was just where we added the acid and exactly how I decided to set the color ver ver from immersion versus steaming really made a big impact on the final color. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and give the video a thumbs up while you're at it. I release at least two new videos to new yarn dyeing videos every single week, but I also do unboxings and live streams, and I think we have a lot of fun playing with color. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.